Okay, chat. Okay, chat. Okay, chat. Exciting news, chat. Exciting news. In case you were missing the news for the past uh, few days, there's a new weapon line in the working right now for the Hunter weapon line, for the Hunter 3. This is all the information we have about it. Now, I'm going to be discussing, based on the lore of Albion and based on the way the devs have implemented weapons in the past, we're going to be discussing what I think this weapon is. And uh, I think I do have a point in my, in my concerns and in my uh, speculation, but just stick till the end to see, uh, I mean, to give me your opinion as well. I'm curious to see what you guys think as well. This is what they said, boys. This is what they said. We, of course, have the Rites of Spring event and the Beyond the Veil content patch coming up, bringing new activities and new equipment items to the game. But we've also started to work... By the way, new equipment items. Very curious to see what that means, but that's a whole different topic on its own. ...full scale on Albion's next weapon line for the Hunter Tree of the Destiny Board. This is all we know about. It's this picture and what Robin has said so far. This is all the information we've got about it, chat. But there are some things, including this picture right here, that we can use to speculate on what this weapon could be. Let's first look at the obvious, obvious thing. What did SBI do so far? This is a studio that created this game. This studio is not going to start creating in a whole different way. They're not going to change their design philosophy like this for a weapon line. They're going to do it like they've always did it. And so far, SBI did, uh, did implement weapons in two different ways. I mean, three different ways, actually. They implemented weapons by replacing weapons. We have the example of a Black Hands. The Black Hands was a dagger that looked a lot like War Gloves right now. And it worked a lot like War Gloves right now. And uh, that weapon was replaced by the Demon Fang. And then the weapon itself, the Black Hands, was behind the design of the War Gloves. So something in the game was repurposed and created into War Gloves. We see here two things. First of all, that a weapon line can be inspired by a different weapon line. And I can also add to this that a weapon line can also be inspired by the weapons wielded by mobs. Because I don't know if you guys noticed this, but a lot of mobs use the abilities that we also have access to. There's Corrupted Dungeon mobs that use the ability of the, um, let's say, Curse Call E-Staff. There's a lot of mobs. Almost all of the abilities that we have are also available to mobs and, and have at some point been abilities that mobs wielded themselves. Almost all of the weapons that we possess right now, like there's a Gelatin Pair boss, there's a Great Axe boss, there's a Bear Boss boss. Those weapons were in the game at least the the design behind them now of course the devs have uh, worked a lot more and they didn't just copy and paste the abilities from the mobs none of the abilities are like that but they're very much inspired by something that exists in the game and this inspiration can come from straight up mobs or from another weapon line by taking a weapon and basically repurposing it as we've seen with the black hands and the demon fang or the black hands and that and the um, War gloves. That was a weapon that was just repurposed into a, into a weapon line. So that's one of the ways they could do this. And the other way they could do this, it's also by implementing something totally new. Even though black uh, war gloves were inspired by black hands in terms of the looks and feel, they are very much their own different thing. Like they're its own thing. There's nothing like that in the game. There's no mobs that use uh, black hands. There's no mo mobs that uses uh, any of the black hands abilities. Those are very much new abilities. So basically this leaves us with two options. Either SBI is going to take something that exists in the game in any way, shape or form and it's going to repurpose it and we have some options when it comes to this or SBI is going to create a totally, totally, totally new thing. Let's try to theorycraft about this and let's discuss both of those possibilities. First of all, let's say the weapon is something that uh, exists. All of the mob abilities so far have been repurposed into weapons themselves. What weapons are an exception to this? Well, there's a water staff that a purple boss from the Heretic Dungeon uses, the, the Witch Mother from the Heretic boss uses, so the water staff could be added. There's also a lighting staff that has never been added in the game from, uh, from the mage boss. Out of those two options, the one that has the most amount of uh, already developed abilities would be the uh, lighting staff. The lighting staff, in my opinion, would be the most well developed because for the water staff, we have two abilities. We have a giant AoE that's wipes across and a conal AoE in front. For the fire staff, for the, sorry, lighting staff, we have a circle AoE that you can drop and it moves around. You have a big AoE that just uh, drops uh, lighting strikes all over the place. You have a conal AoE in front of you. You have more options. You have more options. Not by that much. I think there's four options compared to two options, but it's still a little bit more developed and we've seen it much more, much more frequently than the water staff. Not to mention that the water staff would actually be more of a healer staff than a damage dealing staff in my opinion. So would that be the third healer? I don't think it will. So if we just base all ourselves on mob abilities, those are the two options that we have. Except that they're not the only two options that we have. There's also a third mob 
that people tend to forget about because I know I forgot about it as well. There's a necromancer mob. The necromancer mob that lies in the undead, um, undead dungeons, undead solo dungeons and undead group dungeons. So in my opinion, that would be the third option of something that uh, exists in the game and yet we don't have it available for us. We don't have that staff available for us. Now, if SBI could balance a Necromancer staff, well, that's a whole discussion on its own. I'm not sure. It's going to be very tough in ZVZs. I'm not sure how it's going to work in 1v1s because technically the aesthetic and the feel of the Necromancer is very much something like the Necromancer is the weakling and he uses the dead to strengthen him. I'm not sure how that would work in a corrupted dungeon environment, either being overpowered or very underpowered. But but the thing is, if we just assume that SBI is going to add something that already exists in the game, in my opinion, those are the three options. The Water Staff, which in my opinion falls flat, because that sounds more like a healing weapon than a damage dealing weapon. Traditionally, in MMORPGs, the Water side is the healing side, the rejuvenating side. Then we have the uh, Necromancer Staff, which is rather underdeveloped compared to the Lighting Staff, and the Lighting Staff, which is used by a lot of different mobs in the open world and in dungeons. So if we just based ourselves uh, on, those, uh, on those two things, the more probable one would be the lighting staff. But as we've seen with the world gloves themselves, SBI can go out of their comfort zone and just create weapons that don't exist in the game. World gloves don't exist in the lore of the game, world gloves don't appear anywhere until they all of a sudden appeared. So SBI can very much do something unique right now. But this unique thing that they want to do is still limited by certain things. First of all, it's limited by the fact that this is a hunter weapon line. Thinking about this, the lighting staff already doesn't really fit in the hunter weapon line because hunter is very much in line with nature and nature magic as we've seen with the druidic staff lighting of course is a part of nature but so is fire and frost and i feel like lighting matches much more with fire and frost in the mage tree than with quarter staffs bows and nature staffs in the uh, in the um, hunter tree so then what could this be? Because necromancy doesn't really match up with that either, but it matches a little bit more in my opinion. Well, let's discuss. Let's discuss the possibility of Albion creating something totally new. Let's see which options we have. First of all, let's see what the players want. Because SBI won't just ignore the players and add whatever they want. No, they're going to add something that the players have wanted and the players want. So, uh, so far, as I've um, looked into the Albion's community and just, uh, let's say, studied this a little bit, I noticed that players want five things. They want bards which is great that would be amazing to have bards in albion they want engineers they want a shapeshifter shaman that's very interesting this would be my favorite option they want necromancers and they want lighting staffs those are the things that the player base wants at this moment like engineer in terms of golem making and stuff like that bards in terms of playing songs that empower your opponents a shapeshifter shaman in terms of either uh, either a character that buffs or a character that shapeshifts and attacks or maybe both of them depending on the artifact a necromancer in terms of the classic term necromancy and a lighting staff because it's the only uh, magical staff that it's missing at the moment but that's not the only limitation that we have like what players want we're also limited by what the devs have said the devs have said that this is a hunter weapon line bards and engineer would work in the hunt i mean engineer not really but bards would work but bards don't wield stats so this is a staff it cannot be a bard staff it cannot be an engineer staff so there's three options right now there's the shaman shapeshifter there's the necromancer or the lighting staff and i would say to be honest there's also a fourth option we don't know like it might be something that nobody expects maybe sbi just has an idea that they've never revealed so it's one of those three things honestly more leaned towards thinking this is a necromancer staff because of one reason this thing right here can be one of two things this can be a dream catcher kind of something like this maybe look look this this is a little bit more telling so this is what this could be a dream catcher in which case this would be a shaman in my opinion because the lighting staff has nothing to do with dream catchers or this could be the head of a mob this could be the head of a keeper mob a skull of a mob with a beard it looks a whole lot like uh, because you can say oh deads don't like dead people don't have beards that's true but in albion i beg to differ in albion dead people do have beards that make me shy look at this like i want one of those beards man I, wow this, this is the most my beard grows and yet dead people in albion grow better beards than me i'm jealous man not shy jealous i'm jealous man so this could be a head with a beard or a dream catcher if it's a dream catcher it's a shaman if it's a head Again, it cannot be a lighting staff. Like, just take it by elimination. If it's a dream catcher, has nothing to do with lighting. If it's a head, has nothing to do with lighting. So it's either a druid, shapeshifter, or shaman. Maybe not necessarily shapeshifter, because nothing about this tells us that it's a shapeshifter. But it's a shaman or a necromancer 
again in my opinion i have no idea there might also be a fourth option that just says hey something totally new that we didn't think about and maybe i don't even know maybe it's a weapon repurposed into something totally totally different i have no idea but uh, in my opinion those are the two viable and obvious options i'm very curious to see what you guys think about this i'm very curious to see what you guys think about this so uh, let me know what you think so guys let me know about your opinion in the comment section down below and in the chat i'm really curious to see what you guys are saying about this watch us play live on twitch.tv slash mockdown this video was made possible by our amazing channel members if you want to support by becoming a channel member yourself you are gonna get access to amazing emotes that you can use in the comment section or during live streams member only polls and lots of other awesome perks shout out to all of you awesome badasses thank you so much for supporting us